Hey everyone, Josh here from Panels to Pixels, and to celebrate the channel hitting 20,000 subscribers, which is just insane to me, I've decided to rank my top 20 comic book video games of all time. I decided a long time ago that I would probably never make a video like this. There are hundreds of videos and articles out there that rank superhero games, and I wondered if I really had anything of value to add. But the fact is that I've played a lot of comic book games. Like, a lot of comic book games. And I figured I could offer up some unique insight into these games, and maybe even introduce you to some titles that you might not be familiar with. At the very least, there should be a few surprises along the way. Before diving into my top 20 list, it's always worth mentioning that this is just my opinion, and there are bound to be a couple of games here that will ruffle some feathers. Likewise, there are a few notable omissions that, while I never connected with them personally, deserve honourable mentions. Games like Spider-Man 2, the Marvel vs Capcom series, and Injustice 1 and 2. All great games, but not in my top 20. Anyway, with all of that preamble out of the way, here we go. Thanks for 20,000 subscribers, and I hope you enjoy my top 20 comic book video games of all time! Number 20, Hulk. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction may be a better game objectively, but this movie tie-in title is the only game starring the J Giant on my list, and here's why. The almost but not quite cel shaded art style lends Hulk a feeling of sophistication, and visually this game has aged incredibly well. Meanwhile, the more linear level designs and boss fights make for a tighter and more engaging experience compared to its open world successor. Aimless wanton destruction has never really appealed to me in video games, and the balance between the slower, more cerebral Bruce Banner stealth and puzzle sections balance nicely against all the stomping and smashing. But the main reason I love this game comes down to pure nostalgia. In 2003, 11 year old me was an easy mark for Ang Lee's vision of the Hulk. I had the action figures, the official novelisation of the film, the oversized novelty Hulk smash hands, and a floor to ceiling 3D poster on my wall that I had to wear those red and blue anaglyphic glasses to make any sense of. I still love the 2003 Hulk movie, for all its foibles, and for me it stands up against its contemporaries in that first wave of Marvel movies, films like Blade, Spider-Man and X-Men. And as far as tie-in games go, Hulk does a great job at capturing the spirit of the movie and offering fans the chance to take control of the Green Goliath. Number 19, The Punisher, Sega Mega Drive version. 1993's The Punisher is a very accessible beat-em-up with some unique gameplay elements. Developed by Capcom and ported from the arcade to the Sega Mega Drive, it's your typical side-scrolling fighter but with things like equipable melee weapons and shooting sections. You can play as Frank Castle, naturally, or even as the Player 2 character Nick Fury. A weird pairing when you actually think about it, but who cares? Shoot first, ask questions later. That's the Punisher way. I especially like how this title has an easy mode that basically halves the game's length, but retains its difficulty. It's great for those times when I want to replay the game, but only have half an hour to kill. I wish more classic beat-em-ups had done this with their easy modes. I've never played the arcade version, so I can't speak to how faithful the Mega Drive slash Genesis port actually is, but I know that this game is one hell of a good time especially if you can rope in a friend as a second player. I just wish that I could actually afford a physical copy, as the PAL version is one of the more expensive games on the system. Number 18, X-Men 2 Clone Wars. No place to hide, no place to run, the mutant age has now begun. I am a die-hard apostle of the Sega Mega Drive. It was my first console as a child, and it might just be my favourite video game system of all time. So it's a shame that there are only a handful of decent superhero titles on there. Right at the top of that pile though is X-Men 2 Clone Wars. My overriding memory of this game is just the opening level. This cold open, pun intended, lands you right in the middle of the action, infiltrating an enemy base in snowy Siberia. No start screen, no character selection, no nothing. The amount of time I would spend resetting the console to get the randomly allocated character that I wanted for this level probably exceeds the amount of time I actually spent playing the game, but there you go. Sadly, the tough as old boots nature of the game ensured that I never got much further than the first couple of stages, but that was all X-Men 2 Clone Wars needed to earn its place in my heart and on this list. Number 17, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, SNES version. For the longest time, I've wanted to do a video where I rank and review all of the DC Animated Universe games. I don't know if I'll ever actually get around to doing that, but you can be sure that the adventures of Batman and Robin for the SNES will be somewhere near the top of that list. One of the main reasons I love superhero games from the 16-bit era so much is that due to the 2D sprite work and beautiful bright colours, it often feels like you're actually playing a comic book, or in this case, cartoon. Developed by Konami, this action platformer is of course based on Batman the Animated Series, the show that spawned a whole generation of Bat fans, myself included. 
The game features satisfying combat and, true to the character, gadgets to equip and puzzles to solve. I really love how each level is presented as an episode of the show, with a title card and its own story that leads to a final confrontation. But let's be real, the main draw here is the graphics. The game is drop dead gorgeous. I only wish I wasn't so crap at it so I could actually see it through to the end. Number 16, X-Men Mutant Academy. I never really got into the Marvel vs Capcom series when I was growing up. In the age-old war between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat fans, I was staunchly in the Mortal Kombat camp. And by the time the PS1 rolled around, I was no longer interested in 2D sprites. I'd already graduated to games like Tekken 3 and Soul Blade. So when X-Men Mutant Academy came along and was basically Tekken but with Wolverine, I was all in. Now I'm not claiming that Mutant Academy is a better fighting title than Marvel vs Capcom, but it's the one I played the most as a kid, and the one I found myself going back to more and more as an adult. I've talked about this game before, along with Neversoft Spider-Man, and I really can't stress to you enough how earth-shatteringly brilliant it was to see our favourite comic book heroes in three dimensions. Before superhero movies took over the world, this was it, and it was the dog's danglies. For that reason alone, I will always love this game. Number 15, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. The first Ultimate Alliance is a game that I enjoy a little bit more every time I play through it. That's not to say I didn't like it the first time, I just didn't appreciate it for what it was. You see, this isn't a video game, it's an interactive encyclopedia of the Marvel Universe. Put aside the clunky button mashing gameplay and the tired outdated visuals and you will find a game so rich in Marvel lore and world building. Ultimate Alliance leaves no stone unturned on its galaxy hopping guided tour of famous Marvel locations. And here's something I never thought I'd say about a video game, I love the stats and point system. I've never been a fan of RPGs, my attention span is too short. While my friends at school were losing their mind over Final Fantasy VII, I was just bored to tears by it. But slap a superhero skin over the top, and I will do inventory management as if my life depended on it. Building my own little squad of heroes, teaming up Spider-Man with members of the X-Men and Avengers, was something I'd been doing with action figures for as long as I could remember. Now I could do it in a video game, and it was everything I ever dreamed of. To say I'm excited about Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 would be a huge understatement, but my heart will always belong to the original. Number 14, Marvel's Spider-Man. Some of you may be surprised that this game isn't higher on my list, but the truth is, I have a very strained relationship with Marvel's Spider-Man on the PS4. When the game first came out, I was quick to pull it apart and criticise its generic art style and flawed storytelling, even though I was won over by the fluid gameplay and Yuri Lowenthal's portrayal of Peter Parker. But as the months have gone by, I've come to appreciate the game for what it is, and not what every critic and rabid Twitter fanboy was telling me it is. It's a solid AAA superhero title that holds its own against the likes of Batman Arkham Knight or the Infamous series, and does a good job of representing the modern dance lot slash MCU era of Spidey in video game form. Even so, it's far from the best Spider-Man game ever made in my opinion, in fact there are at least three more coming up on this list that I like better. It does, however, get bonus points for the spider booty. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid sexy Spider-Man. Number 13, The Punisher. 2004's The Punisher is a third-person shooter in which you take control of Frank Castle to wash the scum off the streets of New York. Gameplay-wise, it's a fun but forgettable Max Payne clone, remembered mostly for its controversial interrogation scenes, which were partly censored here in the UK. The game's story is an unusual mix of the Thomas Jane film and elements from the comics. Something that really took me by surprise the first time I played it was the many Marvel cameos from the likes of Iron Man, Black Widow and Matt Murdock. It's a relic of a bygone era, when Disney mascot Tony Stark could show up in a game that has you murder a man with a drill press. The Punisher stands alone in the pantheon of comic book video games, and for that reason, it earns a place on my top 20 list. Number 12, X-Men The Arcade Game. Here's one that I only played for the first time last year. X-Men is a four or six player arcade game that I never saw in the wild growing up, but I did get to experience it when I visited Arcade Club, the largest arcade in Europe, with a few friends of mine. I don't think my mates were too enthused about sinking an hour into what is admittedly a pretty repetitive beat-em-up, but I was thrilled when I heard Colossus's famous or the classic I am Magneto, Master of Magnet coming out of an original four-player cabinet. 
Once my buddies saw how much fun I was having, they were happy to oblige. After all, what are friends for? I like how this game serves as a time capsule of X-Men in the early 90s. Well, actually, late 80s, as the character lineup and their appearances were based on model sheets from 1989's Pride of the X-Men animated pilot. What else can I say about this one? Walk right, punch bad guys, welcome to die. Number 11, X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse. For as long as anyone cares to listen, I will never stop professing my love for the X-Men Legends series. These titles were the precursors to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and are, in my opinion, the superior games. In X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse, you can create your own team of merry mutants from the likes of Wolverine, Storm, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, Gambit, Jean Grey, and many more. As someone who grew up living and breathing the X-Men animated series and movies, this game was a revelation. In many ways, you as the player take on the role of Professor Xavier, building your team and honing their skills and abilities to suit your playstyle. The different levels aren't as varied as Ultimate Alliance, but you do get to visit classic X-Men locales such as Genosha, the Savage Lands, and the Weapon X facility. Each area feels much more oppressive and old school dungeon crawler e, which I actually prefer. I find that a lot of games like this from the PS1 and 2 era have a distinct claustrophobic atmosphere due to hardware limitations. By the time this game came out in 2005, I was quickly losing interest in comics and video games, but I still thought that Wolverine and Co were cool. Decked out in their movie costumes of black leather and surly expressions, this wasn't your granddad's X-Men. For me, this game represents the last time I really cared about Marvel's flagship team of gifted youngsters. The movies went severely downhill with The Last Stand the following year, Joss Whedon finished his run on Astonishing X-Men, and since then Marvel have slowly sidelined the Children of the Atom in favour of their MCU stars. But when I want a hit of good old fashioned mutant mania, I throw X-Men Legends 2 on and get ready to make shish kebabs, bub. Well, I hate to spoil the fun, but if you couldn't already tell from this video's title, I'm splitting this top 20 list into two parts. Sorry about that. Tune in next time to see which superhero titles made the grade as we delve into my top 10 comic book video games of all time. As always, thank you for watching this video, but also thanks once again for 20,000 subscribers. If, for some bizarre reason, you are not one of those 20,000 people, I know, weird right? But you want to see more stuff like this, then don't forget to subscribe to Panels Pixels so you don't miss out on future videos. Okay then, comment below what you think is going to be in my top 10, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!